Hello and welcome back to the fourth episode of our CK3 Elder Kings campaign as King Ermic of Orsinium. We have seen this man in the last 25 years rise from a lowly chief to a high chief to the king of the orc kin. And we have also watched every single one of his children grow into almost every single one of his children. Uh, at least five of his children go grow into strong young warriors. And we have lot, watched a lot change in the world. We saw the um, we saw the imperial or the Cyrodiilic potentate collapse. We have watched Skyrim split and split even more between east and west, and now the west has completely broken down as the um, last king, the last high king of western Skyrim, uh, I think... I think it was Ferengar. Possibly. Or maybe Svarter. We, we saw, I think, King Ferengar, uh, for some reason, either rescind his uh, High Kingdom title over Western Skyrim, or maybe he was forced out by a faction. I'm not really exactly sure. I think the Alinor have expanded deeply into Valenwood. I'm not too sure about that, but I think they have. We have seen the King of Canalis over here in southeastern Cyrodiil uh, greatly expand. And I think this kingdom title this kingdom title includes I think it includes some hold or city, but I'm not that certain. Ah, Bravo. Bravo. Yeah, yeah, remember that city from Oblivion. And we have seen us raid our neighbors uh, the Dunmer and the Col not the Colovians, the Nibbanese we have seen Ermic raiding quite a lot to gain a substantial fortune we have also seen him fight off a multitude of invasions from the, Dun the Dunmer and also fight wars of conquest in both the um uh, I can't remember. The uh, Vallis Mountain region and also into Shaden Hall, where is, which is our first target for expanding Orsinium to become a great power in Tamriel. And I, I, I say let's get right back into this. Our sons seem to, except for my oldest son, which is Ugnath, I think all of our sons are developing into strong, young orc warriors. For the most part. Actually, I think it's only our namesake, Ermic, that has really gone on to become a fierce warrior of his own. The rest have been um, good and above average. Ah, Shakhigyu comes of age. I believe that is my... Uh, fifth son. I'm proud to see my son no longer as a child, but as an adult. Shakhigyu has never displayed much interest for the subject of warfare, but I always hoped that might be a passing phase. I was naive. He has shown little understanding of the subject, but at least he knows which way to hold a sword and might even be able to tell a footman from a champion. That is... That is not great. He is a misguided warrior. I think that is the worst education trait of all of our children by far so he will likely not amount to much and he will probably be killed by his other brothers should a succession crisis break out but for now we will try <laughs> to expand Orsinium I'm thinking we have a lot of gold we have quite a lot of men for our size we can station another men at arms regiment I'm thinking what we can do is declare another holy war, possibly. Yeah, we seem to have a lot of piety. Can we even declare holy wars? No, but we can conquer duchies. And we can conquer 
uh, counties, but it does cost us quite a bit of prestige, which we can gain back from raiding. And I will also wait for my truce with Skinia to expire in three months. Yeah, we will raise all of our armies. I do not think this uh, overlord uh, Caesius of Bethel has any allies, so it should be an easy conquest for us. I think the only great way to give our sons prowess is to conquer land for them, but we are not even yet at our domain limit. So that will be a little while in the future. It shouldn't be too, too long. But I think we will try to expand as quickly as possible. I am worried about our neighbor, Canellus. Uh, but he seems to not have any allies, but I don't... This is his maximum strength, which is actually quite shocking. And he has mercenaries hired. So do I really have any contests in the region? Sejanus, Overlady Casina of Sejanus, is actually significantly strong. She's probably stronger than us, but fortunately she does not have any battle mages to speak of. Alright, so we will siege down uh, Kaladil, and I will personally lead that siege, though I do not think I am really a siege leader, but I don't think I have any to speak of. And we do not have any um, onagers or siege engines, so... That is not great. However, we'll just take that time because we are a great commander. So in case we have to suffer any attacks or any other invasions, we'll just let it go. And we might actually have to split my army and go on an orc hunt. Ah, my queen will be commanding my second army for me rather than my son, which is quite, which is quite neat. It's nice that in orc culture, I didn't even realize that in... Um, orc kin culture that my wife would be able to command armies but we are attacking we're attacking the uh, duke's forces at Morngate which seems to be a heavy spot for combat we have 47 advantage that is crazy our damage is increased by 94% our advantage gives us 63 does it really So 28 because of our Martian, 5 because we're leading our own troops, 5 because we're stoic, small hill fort, plus 2. Oh, so that's, so we get a defensive bonus because that is our fort being besieged. I didn't realize that CK3 actually did that on like CK2, but EU4 does the same exact thing when an enemy is besieging your fort. Uh, controlled territory defender advantage plus 5, faith hostility advantage plus 6, and defending in mountains plus 12 that is insane and you will see actually over in my other series i think for the fourth episode of my fallen eagle campaign which i, I will reference both of these series <laughs> while it, it, with each other because i am recording them as concurrently as possible but you will see in my other advantage my in my other series that um we suffer a lot with our uh, commander advantage and our battle advantage because I end up going heavily into debt into that series at one point and you will see just how badly that screws me over during times of conflict so yeah escape my prisoner Baroness and Neva and Nevia has escaped my dungeon the Baroness of Wyrill my guards have nothing to say in their defense but the damage is already done nonetheless Oh, she's just a baron over here. I think I probably captured her in battle if uh, she was my prisoner. And, oh, they actually attacked me out of nowhere, which is not smart. But actually, I love the little uh, models that they have over here. They actually really did a great job with the unit models in this. The mod authors of Elder King's too is they're just they're so good and I, I really applaud you guys for the work you've done so far I'm excited to see this mod getting updated 
in the future, especially with future CK3 um, expansions and content. Yeah, so I will ransom War Lady Cicery for a very modest amount of gold, but gold nonetheless. Mysteries of the Code. My son Gorgath and his little friend uh, Nazgra have taken a copy of the code. I think this event already popped up, and I, I think it was with Gorgath. That's my youngest son. Is he being? He is being educated by me, and my youngest daughter has yet to get an education. But I will educate her myself because she does have a martial education. I think Gorgath can remain cynical. Yeah. I don't think that really impacts us. And we are getting raided, actually. We're getting raided by the Dunmer, the tribe of Zabamat. Which isn't... <laughs> I'm not happy about that, but we'll see. They're, they're raiding 10 golds worth of loot, but I really can't do much about that. I can't really split my army effectively and go after them. Did they leave before raiding? Oh no, they, they did successfully raid. But okay, we are converting, we're almost finished converting, we're promoting our culture in Kogaz, which is good. And eventually when we convert enough culture, which will actually, I think, take a long time. Um, when we finally do that, we can become the culture head, the cultural head of the um, mountain orcs, which will be very, very good. I'm losing where I am. <laughs> okay, um, where... Oh, the Lordship of Morrowgate. Wait, that's Morrowgate and this is Morngate. Nice. Alright, so which tree was I going down? I need to see what's the most effective for us, because we do have heavy infantry. We don't really have cavalry. Increase control in county progress gain. Night effectiveness is also good. I think I might do that because that will just increase our kill count per battle, which is very necessary in order to win, especially a prolonged conflict and one that you will be outnumbered in. Because even if you defeat an army, if you don't kill enough of them, fatally at least, like you can rout their whole army, but if you don't kill enough, it's not great, but fortunately, um, Ermuk is a goddamn beast on the battlefield. Today, Grundag held a fiery sermon for all the children of the court. They were apparently spellbound as he zealously read from the code. My son, Nazgra, kept telling me about how much he enjoyed the passages about Bo uh, Boethia and how they, and how they as someone whose ideals he will aspire to emulate. Huh. Is it even worth it to give him zealous? I have to see. I always forget what the traits are. It's That's good martial, and he is 9, and he only has a martial of 2, so I would like to increase that. I could also give him ambitious, which is just good across the board, but I think I might give him zealous. Yeah. And the Kolovian Estates seem to have broken out into civil conflict. And General uh, <laughs> Mayrita of the Clovian Estate seems to be kind of screwed in this. Her father was uh, Lord Etrebus, who was a beast on the battlefield. Like, absolutely amazing. He died... He died a couple years ago from his wounds, which I expect. He, he has been a commander for multiple decades at this point. To the miserable King Ermic, we have been burdened by your oppressive laws for far too long. No more. We are done paying you taxes. There's a Dunmer Peasant Revolt. Fortunately, it seems to be small, so I can definitely split off some troops in order to handle that. And I will command them personally. I'd send my sons into there. I'm not really worried about them dying, but I don't think it'll give them really any experience, considering they're not landed, any of them. 
None of them are landed uh, uh, vassals at this point. Okay, so we won that battle mightily. We have crushed that Dunmer revolt. Let me. Can I check my control in the counties? 86, 86. Skinia is surprisingly 100. We're almost finished with the Siege of Bethel. And we can take that. Perfect. We can disband all of our levies. And then we can do this neat little thing where we go straight back to war with War Lady Cicery of Skinia. She shouldn't. She has one ally, the Baroness of Nasso. Yeah, this should this should be pretty easy. I th I think I have enough prestige. Can I just take the county? Yeah. All right. Yeah, we are quickly we are rapidly expanding here, which is good. You know, we have to we can't face another invasion by the Dunmer again the the way it was because especially House Redoran is very very strong. They have a lot of war mages too, so we would like to avoid getting attacked on every front at once. So, in in Ermic's opinion, especially as the king of the Orsimer people, trying to prevent another fall of his people's kingdom, in his mind, the best defense is a mighty offense. But, oh. How did they get so many troops? Did they just hire a ton of mercenaries? Holy orders! Oh no. Um. Oh no. <laughs> I may have made a mistake because we may not win this battle. It says we will probably win, but we are also attacking them in the mountains. A fallen sun amidst the chaos that engulfs the mountains of Boilith. I attempt to catch my bearings across a field. I spot Ugnath, my oldest son, desperately fighting. Skinny pikemen are slowly surrounding him. His exhaustion only too clear. The glint of a hammer suddenly catches my eye, and I watch as Latorius, champion to Grand Mistress Finia, oh no, delivers the vicious death blow. I could not have saved him, but no parent should outlive their child. That's why we have so many sons, they were all bound to be warriors. Latorius was most definitely a better fighter than he was. And he is the caravan master for the Grand Mistress Finia of the Knights of Atherius, who herself isn't that great of a warrior. She, she's, she's pretty good, like compared to me, she's not great, but she is great in her own right. But Jesus, Latorius, we will keep an eye on him hopefully to seek revenge at some point. Latorius will not get away with this. Yeah, I think we'll form a rivalry with him. That fortunately does not affect our chances on the battlefield, and it seems we are destroying them. I remember the day when my son Othzog was born to my champion Rolfsub, my implacable son. Memories like these bring me comfort no matter what happens. I know that my family is there for me and that House Shadborgab stands strong. The mighty mind knows courage, I whisper under my breath. Those being our house words. And that gives us stress loss. Eh, I'll probably give my son some money. We have a lot of children still, but our heir or supposed heir Ugnath, has been slain in battle. Fortunately for the orcs, I, fortunately and unfortunately for the orcs, that is, you know, that is one of the biggest honors. That is probably the biggest honor. The Battle of Boilith. Our 3,000 men faced their 4,200. We lost 400 of our men to their 1,600. That is insane. We did kill two of their champions in return, so that is very good. And our son, Prince Ermic, actually uh, dealt the killing blow on uh, 
Carasius. So he's got his first kill, I believe. Yeah. Oh, and Oranius was slain in battle by Prince uh, Shaghigu. Very good. Yeah, our sons are doing damage. Uh, our son, Prince Ermic, the, the beast on the battlefield that he is, slew 114 men. Supposedly. But, yeah, our sons are doing very well. I don't think it shows me because I'm the commander, but... My kills are not the same exact kills as they would have. Alright, now we will go on to Hero Hill and besiege it. And we will get our retribution on the Nibbanese for their transgressions. I am surprised I won that battle, but with the kind of advantage we are having, I... We did make a very fantastic character, and surprisingly, under 400 points. I took Gorgath out playing with a bow, and to my surprise, he ran into a wounded doe. He later lashed out at me, thinking I had staged a whole encounter as some kind of test. We don't want him to get paranoid, but we also don't want him to get sit, uh, uh, sadistic. Jeez. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having trouble speaking. I am recording this pretty late at night. And I do have to go to work in the morning, and I've worked all day today, so I am quite tired. Battle of Hero Hill. We are facing Hilarion with 21 Marshall, but 19 advantage. He is another of Grand Mistress Finia's uh, courtiers. And we slew a lot of them that battle. Our 2,900 men faced against our 2,600. We lost 266, and they lost 1,077. I will say, by far, this campaign is going a lot better than my Fallen Eagle campaign. And uh, if you guys want to check that out, episode 4 and 5 are going to be very, very fun and interesting. And definitely no Breeze, but I will continue that campaign until I lose, more than likely. And I doubt I will. I may be new to CK3, but... I very much love a challenge, and honestly, a challenge makes everything more interesting now, doesn't it? Cause stuff stuff gets stuff gets really interesting after that. You can unlock a new perk for the martial lifestyle. We'll take more advantage and take less casualties. I do like that. Yeah, cause taking less casualties in the long run is a very good boon. Queen Ruff, Queen Wolf sub is pregnant. I am 53 and I'm still having children. Outliving a child, oh Malakath, how could you do this to Groknag? If I have sinned, why did you not punish me instead? He was blameless, my perfect son. Life had so much more in store for him. He did not deserve this. And we hit critical stress, stress level one. I've never actually gone to stress level three and I definitely do not intend to. Mental break torrential grief. Life has never been easy, but it feels like the loss of my son, Gaknag, has pushed me over. I lost another son. I did not even realize that. Oh my gosh. So, Gaknag, I suppose, was wounded on the battlefield and died from his internal injuries? Oh no. He wasn't that great of a son, but still and he was maimed he lost an arm so we have lost two sons already in the course of the last uh, what five years i still remember him as a baby so tiny so fragile despite what he survived growing up growing older until now when he suddenly stopped i had so many hopes for his future so many things i wish to see which now can never come to pass Oh, gosh. A drink to remember him, and a drink to forget. We could get Confider. And we have Managed Grief, which I, I think isn't that great of a trait, but... I think we'll go for that. We're an orc, but we, we still do have feelings. We lost two sons at the end of the day, even if we are a strong warrior culture. 
that annexes them, so I won't take it hostage. To the miserable King Ermic, may wisdom ever elude you. You're a much greater foe than I imagined. In order to put an end to this bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. So I currently have this aching feeling that anytime I do go to war against these, um, against the Nibbanese and anyone of Cyrodiil that I will be facing holy orders, which is, which is fine with me, but it's not, it's not all that great. And we have a bit of prestige still, so I am thinking that we could launch one more war and see if we can't take the entirety of Shaden Hall, actually. Because we do not have... Yeah, we'll take Shaden Hall. We'll spend 188 prestige. And we are just expanding here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm kind of worried about losing all my sons, though. But at the end of the day, I think I still have my daughter, even though she is married off. She's still 25, and she's still young. My daughter actually has a very good, or not very good, but an, an average Magicka ability. So I wonder what spells she has unlocked. If any, because um, she's not a landed character, so she doesn't have any focuses. Foci. We do not have any other magical children other than her, but that is okay. Maybe our dynasty will become more magical in time, but we will have to see. The Shad Borgab. Oh, they have hired a Holy Order, I believe. Yep. Alright, um... Well, I have my ally, Chieftain uh, Burzgrag, the Orc of Narzober, and he is also a very powerful character. With a decent dynasty of his own growing. Yeah, and my grandson is a member of his dynasty too. He's growing to be in a pretty, pretty okay orc. Yeah, so we will call him into war. And because of the orc culture, I'm almost positive that we can't marry our sons off. Yeah. Because I think only the chief or the king can marry, or, yeah, a landed character can marry. So after this war, I think I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna land... I'm gonna give my son, Prince Ermac a uh, county in Shadenhall. I might actually give all my sons counties there, but we'll also see about that. So we can't get any other alliances. So what I might have to do... I could found a holy order, but I think I have to be at peace. Because I do have the piety, and I actually do have the gold. Unless we spend it all on mercenaries, which may or may not happen. But we currently have 4,100 men. I wonder if that'll be enough given how both high quality our Orcish army is and how good our commander is. And I wonder which holy order they actually raised. It actually looks like... Um, I actually can't tell. Knights of Aetherius. I think Hilarion was the one that killed my son. No, it wasn't Hilarion. It was Laortius who killed my son. And he's actually slain quite a few characters. For somebody with not that crazy of a prowess skill. Like, definitely, definitely good. Uh, slash excellent. But he has slain a lot of characters, including my eldest son, so she she definitely has her uh, grandmistress Finia of the Knights of Aetherius definitely has her hand of cards. I'm going to see if this attack is worth it. Actually, their armies are split, and we are definitely going to get that defensive advantage from the mountains. 
at our own fort. Yeah, advantage 43 in my favor. Rolls of 0. Roll of 5. 8, 8, 6, 7. And the other half of their army merged, so... I think we'll see if we win this. It'll probably be pretty close, but... The casualties that we'll inflict will be massive compared to our own. Oh my gosh, victory, the Battle of Hero Hill, the second Battle of Hero Hill in the past decade. Our 2,900 men against their 5,600, we lost 347, and they lost 2,800. And we have captured Hilarion, Caesar Damian, uh, yeah, Caesar Damian was slain by Ermic. I don't think that's my son, that's my champion. Cordius was slain by my son, Prince Ermic, <laughs> and Papius was slain by someone else. All right. God, these battles are very, very decisive. All right, so we, we will siege. I think we have to siege the Priory of Kemen, but I'm not too sure if that's the only title. My son, oh, Rolf Sub, you have been so brave, so strong. Words cannot describe my love for you. And now we have a perfect little son. My little son was born under the sign of the warrior. That is quite excellent. Those born under the sign are said to be skilled with weapons of all kinds, but prone to short tempers. Who will you become, my child, and what shall I call you? We need to buy a name then, whatever that was. Lorig, Snag, Glorig, Lorash, Karg, <laughs> Grognag. I think... No, I didn't have a son named Grognag, but I really thought about it. I have so many children, I'm gonna lose track. Zacherback. Uh... Glorgs ago. I should really speed through these parts because I do take forever naming songs. I'll just name him Grognak. I think I'll write that myself. Grognak. And hopefully he will grow into a strong young warrior like his brothers. Oh, I actually never realized there's that little um, arrow there. That is quite nice. Is that a base game, or is that just a mod? Alright, we will ransom our prisoners, because I say why not. Just more money. None of them are really good enough to best the army of Orsinium. I should really get siege engines if I'm able to get more mana arms. Servant of Honesty, I was shocked when I caught my son, Nazgra, trying to steal from the travel chest of the visiting Baroness Celia, who's pregnant. Why is a Baroness Celia visiting? Wait, is she my vassal? Oh, I actually finally have a vassal who hates me. He confessed he had thought he could get away with it, but now knows it was wrong. Nazgur keeps the trait of honest. Deceitful. I think we'll let him keep honest. We're trying to keep our stress low. Don't drink too much coffee. And I think um, once one of these campaigns or both of these campaigns end, I, I kind of want to start this now, but I want to know what you guys want to see me play. Um, do you guys want to see me play another mod of CK3? Or maybe another character in one of the mods we're already playing, Fallen Eagle and Elder Kings. Because I can play, like, Princess of Darkness, um, the A Game of Thrones mod. We could... Uh, we could play the uh, the Lord of the Rings mod, whatever that may be called. Um, we could play the Shogunate mod and play in Ancient Japan, which will be a fun struggle for me with pronouncing things. Or I could play something else. I could play EU4... Um, I could play Victoria 2, because I, I quite like Victoria 2, and I, I kind of refuse to ever buy Victoria 3, simply because I think it's, I think it was a poor release or design choice by Paradox. I could also play Stellaris, we could run a campaign 
of even classic CK2, which I would be up for, but I can very much exploit that. And mods for that, like Historical Improvement Project, which are pretty good on their own. Um, yeah, so I could, I could pretty much run anything. Imperador Rome is definitely one of those games of choice of mine, especially with the Invictus mod. It is excellent. And Imperador came out, and I loved it, but I think it's so much better after the um, end of end of cycle, end of game cycle updates and patches, and it's even better now because of the modding team over there. Because it may not be as Invictus may not be as revolutionary as say um, Elder Kings in CK2 and 3 or the Game of Thrones mod, but it is still very, very excellent. And I would recommend. Honestly, I think Imperador needs a revival. Maybe not from Paradox, but maybe from the modding community. And I think that... I'm not sure if all the codes are released for that game. But if they're not, I think they should be. I think they might be. To the modding community, I think they might be released. But if they're not, they should be. Because Imperador was such a great concept. I think they did well with the updates and trying to bring the game back to life and just the community has done so much to make it a game that's worth playing. Uh, we might not be Siege Shaden Hall because we do not have Siege Engines and that has a fort level of 9 as you would expect from an Imperial um, County Capital. Gorgath comes of age. With his coming of age, my tuition of Gorgath is at an end. As an active and enthusiastic child, it is no surprise that Gorgath has done well in his studies of war and combat. He has shown great aptitude both in battle tactics and the management of armies. He will make a fine commander one day, I am sure. Um, he's alright for now. He, he's, he's above average. He's, he's definitely a good commander, but to be the future head to be the future king actually of Orsinium and the head of House Shadburgab maybe not yeah so we are winning each and every one of these battles just decisively we may have not even I, we didn't even need our allies to come in but it, it was very nice for me to call them in I did panic I did not realize how overpowered uh, Ermic of Orsinium was, but he is. And that is definitely great for the tribe. And I'm pretty sure after I land a couple of my sons, we should be able to expand our dynasty more, but it seems I am having almost zero problem having children with my wives, even, even in their more mature years. Voshball. The sun is shining and peasants are milling about the Voshball tourney. All my champions gather in teams of six with their leather balls as Hedaris announces the tournament in their honor, and for once, I get to simply sit and watch. I'm not going to spend an entire tourney day stuck to a throne, however. So I could get opinion from my sons and courtiers, and I think vassals maybe. I could give them prowess. I, I could actually give my son a Nazgra prowess. I bel Is he my youngest at this point? No, he is my third youngest. He is now my... One, two, three, four, five, six. He's my seventh son out of nine and out of ten children. <laughs> We are an ever-expanding family. And he gets four prowess. Oh, that is simply stunning. He has a base of ten, so he will he will become a good warrior. Given time, and titles, and experience if he lives. So available perks. Um, we could get Household Guard. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that. Well, Gallant is a good trait that I do like. It is very good. But it's really not... It's not really Ermic's go-to, but I suppose the orcs are honorable characters. 
Yeah, I think I'll take number of knights for now. I do like to go down multiple trees at once. I like to give myself uh, that kind of flexibility. And I think we will just simply attack the uh, Duchess's army of Shadenhall at Castle Shadenhall. And it's actually being led by Overlady Casta herself, who's not so great of a commander. She's an above average diplomat and steward. Uh, she's actually a good diplomat and steward, but other than that, she has zero place commanding armies, especially against such a foe like myself. It's gonna be sad when Irma gets older. And he is aging. Alright, we can besiege Tornhall, but that is also a high level castle. Yeah, so I think I'll besiege uh, Blackside, which we'll, we will sadly gain uh, attrition there. But we should be able to besiege that relatively quickly. 18 months. This war began two years ago. I just kind of want to get our major bit of expanding out of the way before Ermic gets too old. You know, before I have to take whatever successor I may get and just go with it. Because if Ermic gets too old, then um, when Ermic gets too old and eventually does die, which he is somebody that will think about, he's definitely worried about the future of his people. So he is trying to spend as much time as he can on campaign defending Orsinium. And I hate that these armies are replenishing so quickly. Hide and peak with Nazgul. When the world was my son Nazgur doing in that wardrobe and the servants quarters playing hide and seek, he claims. Oh, well, <laughs> we'll teach him to be chased, I suppose. I <laughs> have to check if I gave my sons uh, any focuses. I did. I have to check to make sure my second and third youngest son are being educated. Because I, I think I, I, I handled that, but I, I don't exactly remember. Yeah, they're both being... Nope. Alright, I will educate him myself. Hope he becomes a stellar commander. And we actually have won that because we have captured Overlady Casta of Shadenhall in battle at the Battle of Kemen. We will enforce our demands, and we will take a large swath of territory for Orsinium. Just gonna check to make sure this video is not going over my time. Unfortunately, it's not. All right, and perfect. And I think I don't even know if I should create the duchy title, but I will most definitely give my son Ermic the. Uh, chiefdom of Shadenhall. Because I think if I live long enough to take a lot of duchy titles, I want my sons to be able to have their own domain, so I think I'm willing to risk my oldest son, Ermic, becoming a very strong vassal. Yeah, I think that's definitely worth it. Which means now that he can marry, I believe, Yas. So, I can marry him to the chief of Narzober, who I think is already our ally because of my daughter's marriage. Yeah. Am I not able to have him marry anyone in the family of the King of Falkren? Are they too far away? That is so strange. Okay. Um, in any case, I'll have my son... Actually, I'll have him marry somebody for traits, I think. More so than even a stat spread. 
Um, I suppose that's not the case. Then we will have him marry somebody that is not club-footed, <laughs> but somebody that is at least younger. Batum Shug. Some of all stats. You can always marry other wives. Stewardship of 26. Okay, yeah, he will marry um, Yazoga Bagla. Alright, and we will let our troops replenish quickly. So what I don't know about CK3 is what increases the levy size. I know that um, uh, cultural innovations can do it, and I think religion can do it and other stuff, but I'm not sure what else can affect that. I don't know if martial affects that. I don't think it does, simply because we are high martial and our men-at-arms regiments are capped. The Dark Cave, one of the children at court, Dinari, has taken the stick the stick horse of a younger girl and thrown it into a nearby cave. My son was there and saw it all happen. Afzog got hold of the household guards and forced Dinari to go into the cave. Dinari's terrified screams could be heard for several minutes before she emerged with the toy. It seems that when Afzog thinks something, the right thing to do, he won't stop until he makes it happen. So, Othsog could get stubborn, or we could take some stress to give him brave. I'm not sure with my current stress level if I'll do that. He might be worth the investment, but he... I'm not really that sure. Your will be done, child. Yeah, I think I'll just have to go that way. Trying to protect uh, Ermic's health. Yeah, so I think now we will attack the Overlady Vianus of Shadenhall, who will again probably conquer or probably um raise up levies. Oh, I cannot afford the cost. All right, so in that case, we'll raise all our men as raiders and try to get some prestige that way. I think if the Archmaster of House Rhetoran isn't that strong, which they seem to be. We might have to go in a different direction with our raiding. Because our neighbors are very strong. And uh, Ermac is just trying to catch up. Because all these petty kings and lords seem to be gaining troops by the second. Today I was given grave news. My son Othzog has fallen ill with rot. I fear this is the end. Ooh, my court physician. I don't know if I trust him. Oh yeah, he's that albino orc. Uh, Bogham. Ah, I think we'll have him be cautious. He has rot. Draining the life of him and a critical health penalty. Yeah, just be careful and he reduce the health diseases for five for five years. Alright, so we'll go on a few raids. We'll also improve our gold. Tribal... I don't know, just tribal cultures can really... just gain so much. So, I think we'll capture skilled slaves and try to improve the development of more Bazool. I think that's actually worth it. And I think... What I need to do is instead of increasing control in counties for my marshal. No, he's actually organizing armies. Uh, Prince Ermic should instead. Oh, wait, no. This is uh, what my steward needs to do increase development in county. But my steward isn't that great, but fortunately, he's not that influential. I think I'll make Olms Rennie. Increase the development. That's what I meant to do. 
And I think we might have to move our court around. But maybe not. Maybe I'll just change vassal contracts of my non... Orc vassals. Or you know what I might actually do? I might just make this easier. And I will give my son Ermic. I will usurp the Duchy of Shadenhall and I will give my son Ermic the High Chieftain Hood. Because he already controls most of the land. He might as well get the vassals. And I know that King Ermic will expand the realm irregardless. Um trying to think grant titles I'm sorry that like I'm thinking so slowly because I am quite tired and just trying to finish this video up before I have to go to sleep for the night and go to work tomorrow um, my video production may slow down because of my work schedule and also because of um, just the amount of stuff I have to do outside of work and gaming, but I'm going to try to get a video out for each series every day as often as I can. That's why I try to record ahead. Till death do us part, my dear bu uh, my, my dear Badush, I might not have loved you, yet I feel you're passing more acutely than I ever thought possible. You were always there, my constant companion. Did I take you for granted? There are so many things. I left unsaid. Rest in peace and at the age of 67. She was the mother of our single son, Shakigyu. And may she rest in peace. I actually want to... I, I always forget which wife of mine had which children. Yeah, so my, my first queen, uh, Magrul, had our three sons, Ugnath, who has died... Princess Shuffdal. Oh, she is the giant character. And our son, Prince Gorgath, who I believe is also a giant. Meanwhile, my other living wife had our other six children, Ermic II, Gorgash, the late, the, the late Gaknag, uh, Prince Nazgra, Othzog, and Grognak. Alright, so we have raided there. We have gotten a bit more prestige. And we will continue raiding. Hopefully not into con not get into contact with the King of Canillus. But if it happens, um I would surprisingly bank on us surviving such an engagement. Our raiding our raiding party has gathered quite a sum of gold. And I think after this raid, we will return home just in case we do get attacked. And Ermic is obviously a faster commander than our enemies. And with that, we got prestige, we got some gold, we got some piety. We can ransom prisoners. I think that's the only one. And that means we can go to war on the overlady Vianus, the child ruler of Farragut. We will go to war for the entire duchy. Hope that they do not raise um, <laughs> too many troops and do not call up a holy order, but they may. I very much expect it to happen. And we seem to, we seem to, uh, like we'll have to face them at the pass, but I suppose not now. We'll wait for this battle to conclude against raiders, and we will try to meet these Nibbanese in battle. I think they're Nibbanese, yeah. We're very much pushing on the Nibbanese realms over in eastern Cyrodiil, and we are laying siege to Fanacaz. I really do want to get some onagers as men at arms, but we have not. Nazgra comes of age. With his coming of age, my tuition of Nazgra is at an end. For the longest time, I was hoping that good tutelage would be enough to teach Nazgra the intricacies of war. 
I was naive. He has only developed a basic understanding of the subject. Oh, that is a shame. But at least he has learned the essentials of managing an army. I hope that the rest will come with experience. But Nazgara is not exactly the sun we are so excited about. I think it's Othsog. But Nazgara definitely, definitely was a good prospect for our future kingship. But we will have to see, considering Irma has so many years on my two youngest children. Alone in the kitchen, greetings, my lord. Adosia, one of the cooks, says, I have your son, Othsag, with me here. I promise to clean the pots in the cookery, you see. She draws in a sharp breath, but he nibbled all the food like a little rat and then fell asleep on a floor sack. He is due, he is due a hiding, if you ask me, but I'll leave him with ye to do with as you see fit. This child is so unmotivated and lethargic, you can confuse him for a corpse. Um, none of these are that great, compassionate or gluttonous. I'll just let him stay lazy, I suppose, but hopefully, hopefully he will grow out of that personality trait. Preferably, of course. Alright, so he, we have taken the Lordship of Thanacast, and now I think we should be able to... No, I think we'll besiege the barony of Kingcrest since it is not in well they are both in the hills and they are taking our forts a little too easily I think in the stronghold of Morbazul since it is only a fort level 3 we will probably upgrade that if I can no I cannot we are tribal so our holdings seem to be very easy to take I think we'll just build palisades. Yeah. Yeah, we'll build palisades. We will split off this army, and I will lead my men all the way to Kemen. See if I can't kill these Nibbanese before they finish the siege. All right, once the siege is done, I think that will be the end of this episode, Orsinium having grown greatly into Cyrodiil and Eastern Shadenhall. You know, the amount of provinces we actually, or the amount of counties we actually took this episode is quite surprising. I think we ended last episode taking Skinia. In this episode, we took Coladil, we took Hero Hill, Kemen, and the rest of the entire duchy of Shadenhall. And, this, and to end this all off, we will be also taking the duchy of Farragut. And I think we will give that to my second oldest son, but we might actually do it based off merit. Which I think is... much better. And I do apologize for going on speed 5. That is definitely not my preferred speed, but for long sieges such as this, especially during wartime, I do like it a lot more. So, to my... I want to see which son of mine is the most deserving. Not Shuffdal. He is not very martially motivated. Gorgath or Gorgesh might be... I think Gorgath might actually be the perfect son of mine to give a duchy title. And we can take duchy, get that prestige, spend a little money, and then grant it to our son, Prince Gorgath, so he can start his own family. Um... Tribe of Farragut. 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 And to end the episode, we will look at what's happening in the rest of Tamriel. Alinor has expanded even more. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. That is... What happened over here? I 
want to check duchy titles then. History. Because, um... God, what blew up? the? Uh, was it the Western Government? Was that what it was called? Absolutely blew up. Yeah, I'm gonna check in the... Um, I'm gonna check when I edit this video what happened over here, because... Uh, in, an Imperial Governant seems to have absolutely blown up for some reason, along with the... I think it was the Imperial Pentateuch or uh, the Cyrodelic Pentateuch. So it seems that like two of the major factions of Cyrodel broke apart and the infighting may have lessened in a major degree but may have increased substantially in a in local terms. So we will see it seems that Cyrodel is so much further now from being united than it was 36 years ago. Eastern Skyrim is currently fighting a civil war against Jarl Bolfric of the Pale. Seems he's also fighting against a... A uh, totemist each, uh, totemist east marcher, from the rift. So that is definitely very interesting. And it seems that the, yeah, it seems that the Dunmer houses have also grown stronger. And this world is vastly changing right before our eyes. All right. Well, that was episode four of Elder Kings 2 as our Orsinium run. And look how much we have expanded in just one episode. King Ermic, in his twilight years, is becoming a true conqueror and is starting to establish his realm. Orsinium once holding itself in, in a... Uh, the kingdom of Orsinium once tucked into uh, High Rock, and I think once tucked into Skyrim as well, is now further east than it's ever been. But hopefully this kingdom of Orsinium under King Ermac of the Shadborgab dynasty will be the last kingdom of Orsinium and the one that survives this great time of turmoil in Tamriel. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining my adventure in Nern, and I hope to see you guys in Episode 5. Check out my other series, uh, my Fallen Eagle series, where we play as the governor and eventually king of Gallia. I'm sorry to spoil a little. And, um, yeah, check back for next episode. Can't wait to see you guys again, and thank you so much.